time because, as has been mentioned, we have a very long uh, collaboration with the, the Faculty of Economics of um, Angolian University. And I'm, I'm very pleased to, to be here today uh, as a rector of the University of Mr. of Police. The university uh, has been selected last year uh, in the National Program for Excellence in France, and we are now five universities in France in this program. So I'm very proud of that, of course. And today I would like to explain uh, the main reason, I think, uh, um, of our uh, selection in this uh, competition. So maybe to, to introduce my talk, let me ask you to consider this smartphone as a metaphor. We all use smartphones every day, and in some way they are even emblematic of modern life. They are also emblematic of the project of my university because of their complexity. They sit at the crossroads of a vast number of disciplines, from mathematics to material sciences, from social sciences to design thinking, and even including general relativity if we think about the GPS in South. And that's why, in isolation, even a genius could not create such an object. It is only possible for collective effort and complex process of organization. And a similar effort will also be essential to master the science of tomorrow. This concept is what we refer to as transdisciplinarity. So to, to function, transdisciplinarity must, of course, and it is very important, rest on excellent disciplinary scientific foundations. But it also requires new kinds of interaction between many disciplines. Its main goal is to enhance dynamic interactions between research and society. And it is also very important with an equal attention to all social change shapes new research themes and all research shapes society. And as main results, we hope that divides between disciplines and between knowledge producers are bridged in order to develop solutions for markets. To fully understand the concept of transdisciplinarity and its articulation with disciplines, let me first define the advantages and disadvantages of disciplines in the academic organization of research. The disciplines, as both intellectual and social constructs, are pillar in the academic organization and in the literature production. As such, disciplinarity is crucial in understanding the organization of knowledge, especially as it relates to higher education, but it induces the compartmentalization of scholarly research, labor, and communication into separate units. <coughs> At the most obvious level, the disciplines confer institutional identity in an organization in terms of departmental address and expectations in terms of curriculum responsibilities. But at a deeper level, part of what defines a discipline is also how it approaches or relates to knowledge, including what it accepts as knowledge and where it draws a line beyond which it does not admit something as proper knowledge. In looking at knowledge, the different disciplines disagree on which points are crucial and which are <coughs> inconsequential, and they emphasize different processes of knowledge validation. Education scholar Janet G. Donald asserts that the method by which knowledge is arrived at a discipline, its process of validation, and the true criteria employed in that process 
are essential to the definition of a discipline. But each discipline will only see a small part of a larger picture. From these definitions of the concept of discipline, we can now go further in the definition of pluridisciplinarity, interdisciplinarity, and transdisciplinarity. Transdisciplinarity is a term and concept largely used today in many fields and all over the world. Presumably, it is most frequently used in the educational area. Unfortunately, this term is used in various meanings which bring about conceptual deviation, semantical slippings, and give rise to dangerous confusions. The present day scientific community has not yet the terminological and conceptual consensus on transdisciplinarity. That's why I will explain what it is for us. But the most frequent and consistent uses of this term and concept, entailing errors in understanding and application, is the confusion between pluridisciplinarity, interdisciplinarity, and transdisciplinarity. Pluridisciplinarity involves additive juxtaposition of different disciplines. It aims to study a topic from multiple perspectives offered by various disciplines. It concerns studying a research topic not only in one discipline but in several at the same time. In other words, pluridisciplinarity approach overflows disciplinary boundaries, but its goal remains limited to the framework of disciplinary research. Interdisciplinarity has a different goal. It concerns the transfer of methods from one discipline to another. According to Nicolas Coup definition, one can distinguish three degrees of interdisciplinarity. A degree of application, an epistemological degree, and a degree of a generation of new disciplines. We have to keep in mind that like pluridisciplinarity, interdisciplinarity overflows the discipline's boundaries, but its goal still remains within the framework of one disciplinary research. Transdisciplinarity is something really different. This word appears to have been introduced in 1970s at a seminar on interdisciplinarity in universities, and this seminar has been held at the University of Nice, jointly sponsored by the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development and the French Ministry of Education. The eminent Swiss psychologist Jean Piaget is generally credited with coining the term, and his conclusion on various kinds of interaction between the disciplines mentioned transdisciplinarity as a kind of an aside, as a higher stage succeeding interdisciplinarity relationships, which will not only cover interaction or reciprocity between specialized research projects, but will place these relationships within a total system without any firm boundaries between disciplines. Even if the notion of transdisciplinarity was introduced at the beginning of the 70s, it remained undeveloped and almost unsighted until the early 90s. Two main schools uh, are effective, the Nicolas Kuyan School and the Zurich School. Nicolas Kuyan's writing led to a new way of thinking about knowledge and inquiry that has included writing from ethical, metaphysical, and even mystical perspectives. The Zurich School has led to work aimed at designing and implementing tangible solutions to real-world problems. And that's this definition that we choose for our project. The question is, how to prioritize 
the interface between science, human sciences, society, and technology in our world. Transdisciplinarity connects a research strategy that crosses many disciplinary boundaries to create a holistic approach. It applies to research efforts focused on problems that cross the boundaries of two or more disciplines, such as research on effective information systems for biomedical research, for example. So transdisciplinarity refers to the integration of diverse forms of research and includes specific methods for relating knowledge in problem solving. It requires adequate addressing of the complexity of the problem and to include the diversity of perceptions of them. It arises when participating experts interact in an open discussion and dialogue given equal weight to each perspective and relating them to each other. This is difficult because of the overwhelming amount of information involved and because of incommensurability of specialized languages in each field of expertise, to excel in transdisciplinarity, researchers need not only in-depth knowledge of the disciplines involved, but skills in moderation, mediation, association, and transfer. Key challenges for transdisciplinarity research can be exemplified through the following questions. How does science more effectively influence decision making? How can scientific research have a greater impact on practically achieving societal and territorial outcomes? How can form a better incorporation of stakeholders' values? A critical defining characteristic of transdisciplinarity research is the inclusion of stakeholders in defining research objectives and strategies in order to better incorporate the diffusion of learning produced by the research. So collaboration between stakeholders and researchers is essential. One of the best examples is nanotechnology. Well, everybody has heard about nanotechnology, the application concern nowadays industry, biomedicine, environment, cell sciences, current users are sundry, cosmetics, scratch resistant coatings, cell cleaning windows, but we have also to think that they can be used for producing combat suites, morph camouflage, to absorb bullets, they can be applied to clean up toxic waste pollution, but also to diagnose and treat cancers, to create self replicating nanorobots. So, the potential of nanotechnology for beneficial or for destructive purposes, for surveillance, which can be good or bad for society, and for many other purposes makes it important for policies about the use of nanotechnology. And it must take into account the concern and interest of all people, not just those of the scientists, enterprises, industries, or other entities underwriting the research. Nanotechnologies have consequences for social justice and for the common good. As with climate change, the risk to health and safety in nanotechnology are so high that global policies beyond the interest of any one group need to be heard and accounted for. Scientists are aware that risk, ethical, and social justice factors need to be worked to advance in the development of nanotechnology before rather than after following irreversible damage. The final characteristic of transdisciplinarity is the tendency to think laterally, imaginatively, and creatively, not only about solutions to problems, 
but to the combination of factors that need to be considered. That's why inputs from the arts and humanities can transform research and education into an entirely new kind of product. The impulse to recombine the given disciplinary elements in a creative way is implicit in that Julie Thompson claim calls the discourse of translation that underlies much recent research in the humanities and social sciences. But of course, being transgressive alone does not qualify academic research as transdisciplinarity. Some of the character characteristics can be resumed as follows. No definitive formulation. No stopping rule. It is always possible to be more efficient to solve a problem. And there are no solutions true or false, but solutions are effective or ineffective. And usage will determine if solution is good enough or not. So to summarize, one can consider that key characteristics of transdisciplinarity are orientation to actual stakeholders, connection to practice, cross-sectoral character and define new knowledge and core in life work of those affected by the problem. So now, let me explain what we have done using this concept of transdisciplinarity to do research, education, outreach and knowledge generation differently. The main goal of our project can be resumed as follows, breaking down barriers and creating new interactions as a fundamental condition for a new university model. By barriers, we mean barriers between different disciplines, of course, but also between different laboratories, between different parts of the universities, between faculty and, and students, between public and private research, between research and research and development. And the risk, if we don't do this, is to freeze existing institutions and academic disciplines, to fragment knowledge and know-how into disconnected components. So we need first a real disruptive scientific vision. When we talk about transdisciplinarity in research, we don't simply mean bringing together different disciplines like mathematics and physics. This interaction is already 3,000 years old. Instead, we want to bring together diverse fields around precise projects to create new paradigms. For example, bringing together researchers in humanities working on cognitive systems and social life. Researchers in linguistics working on language patterns. Mathematicians working on computational neurosciences. Biologists working on aging. Neurosurgeons from the hospital and economists dealing with silver economy. We can together question what are the neurological aspects of the language and, con and cognition associated with aging in the population? And that is a real societal challenge because you know that the population is older and older. It can be the same for education. We decide to have new ways of teaching and learning and to develop these new ways through inverted classroom and what we call flipped classroom. We have to organize all these individual initiatives of our professor in an integrative process, including the students. By using these new approaches and also by involving students more directly in research laboratories, in companies, in defining the curriculum, all students will be able to construct their own knowledge and professional skills. And for us, transdisciplinarity also means rethinking the curriculum 
including the students. Students need to understand that there are usually multiple paths that lead to understanding. They should be encouraged, seek out, and experiment with new things or ideas. They should be taught to ask questions and investigate when things do not make sense. The need to learn to view mistakes as an opportunity for learning rather than something that was unsuccessful. Students should also follow their interests and think outside the box whenever possible. It is also valuable for them to be open to others ideas so they can learn how to build upon and reconstruct their own conceptual knowledge. But teachers can do a number of things to make sure that students have a chance to show their creativeness. One example would be when students are given a research assignment. Teachers could encourage students to either write a paper or do a presentation or perform an experiment or use technology to present their information. This gives all students a chance to complete the assignment in their own creative style. Not only can teachers give options on their assignments, they can ask students how they would like to accomplish the task. Giving students this kind of choice empowers them and hopefully motivates them to do their best. We also design the way to enhance interaction with stakeholders and we design our territory as an ecosystem in which we must cooperate closely with local authorities to develop a common strategy and with companies to develop students' employability. Because innovative technologies are based on a huge and growing amount of scientific knowledge, they must have permanent access to the human resources available within research university. And that's the new deal with companies. This new deal can take many forms, such as the creation of public-private labs, the recruitment of doctoral students by startups, but also the development of privately founded professorships. And in this regard, we have been very pleased to see that most of the companies are ready to be involved in the education programs to form young employees of their own companies. So we design our project as an accelerator for these new ways of thinking. And this project has been the product of two processes. A bottom-up process coming from the entire community in all its diversity. We ask the 25,000 students of how they can design their university in the future. And we also ask our 2,000 professors and researchers within the university. But it is also a top-down process, carried out with our socio-economic partners. And because of this, we have had the enthusiastic backing of both public and private partners. Keywords are summarized on this slide. Challenge the statu quo through innovation. Develop new paradigms by enhancing transdisciplinarity. Enhance adaptability and employability of our students using evolutive and integrative learning processes. Develop collaborative platforms for problem solving and common language for openness. Support invention, disclosure, and creation of startup and spin-off from the laboratories. Share a common strategy and develop skills to work in team projects and to enhance engagement and self-confidence. It is important to notice that the entire scientific community, as well as students, are strongly behind the project, and that has been critical for its success. This new way of thinking the university changes the perspective of everyone involved. It creates a virtuous cycle that makes everyone more self-confident, more committed to the success of the project, 
and it helps eliminate the pessimism that all too often stands in the way of success. The research themes highlighted in our academies have been proposed by the scientific community. The central part of our vision is the creation of this new structure which will facilitate the necessary interaction between the existing and still living academies and faculties and industries and public actors of the region. So we create five academies of excellence, bringing together the diverse research strength of the region and three reference centers that create an interface between the academic world and the private sector. We also plan to have a center of modeling, simulation and interactions, which will promote the use of modern analytical tools that will be necessary to face the scientific and societal challenges of tomorrow. The academies will enable disciplinary decompartmentalization, which is still sorely lacking in French universities. The academies have been conceived and developed in a bottom-up process involving and mobilizing the entire UCH scientific community. The academies will also be aimed at developing close collaboration with research activities, a range of graduate-level training programs that will be transdisciplinary, highly international and attractive, and will fulfill the expectations of the students and of the territory. So I, as an example, let me show you the first academy about networks, information, and digital society. We thought that the digital revolution began 50 years ago is now impacting all human activities especially thanks to the universal and instantaneous access to communication and knowledge tools that are open to each individual. This networking process involving a large part of humanity is opening enormous perspectives for accessing and processing huge masses of distributed data. In the mid and long term, this will have a profound impact on all human knowledge. The digital revolution will also transform how human societies are organized. These areas of research are at the very heart of the academy's preoccupation, and they draw three major ambitions. Designing and experimenting the communication networks of the future, combining high performance, security, and energy economy. The second academy is dealing with complex systems. Recent decades have seen the emergence of a movement for studying complex systems that goes beyond conventional scientific domains. Here the goals are first to discover the common fundamental principles that govern the behavior of complex systems, but also to use the local research community remarkably broad spectrum of scientific activities to develop research about complex systems, from mathematics to societal model, including complex environment, extreme phenomena, networks in the broad sense of the term, system biology, chemical interaction, economic work. The observation, modeling, and understanding of our environment is at the heart of the academy's space, environment, risk, and resilience. You know that it will be probably the big challenges, the major challenges for the 21th century to give our societies a degree of control over the natural and artificial results threatening our territories. Increasing our innovation and design capacity 
in instrument manufacturing and data processing for observing space and earth, and to play a leading role in the European Space Agency, but also to evaluate natural and artificial hazards on land, sea, and near space, and reinforcing our expertise and know-how in the field of environmental phenomena linked to the global change. The use of resilience strategies based not only on individual actions, adaptation of human in catastrophic situations, but also collective ones, public management and territorial risk planning will also be developed. The extraordinary rise of biological design over 15 years of unbroken technological progress is bringing fundamental changes to scientific approaches in genetics, molecular biochemistry, imaging, integrative biology and medicine, and of, of course, it will also deal with economy. So this academy proposes addressing three major scientific challenges of the 21st century. Rapid processing of new personal and medical data. Initiating bio-inspired approaches in areas such as information storage or new experimental models of living systems. And systematic exploration of the special characteristic of an individual or a species. Priority will be given to the development of new technologies that are able to measure very large number of parameters on a scale ranging from a single cell to an organism. Finally, the Academy dealing with human societies, ideas and environments. You know that profound changes are currently overtaking our societies. These changes concern widely diverse but interdependent and complex domains, such as economic and political globalization, climate change, anthropomorphic impact, and the digitalization of relationships between individuals. The first aspect is an historical perspective dedicated to times of great change, deals with the various relationships that man has maintained with his natural and cultural environment during phases of great transition. The second dimension relates to the emergence of ideas, of their mode of diffusion, of the transformation they undergo and how they relate to the changes in question. And the third dimension concerns the identification of new fundamental characteristics of contemporary societies and the analysis of their consequences as regards societal, cultural and economic organization and dynamics. Our university intends also to incorporate the digital approach at the highest level inside the center of modeling, simulation, and interaction. By opening new research into major challenges, new coordination modes, how is done the construction of social networks, how can we protect individuals, how can we protect the access to information, what can we share in data? The MSC will generate relevant models that will serve as decision-making tools for the competitiveness of corporations and the management of economic risk, for economic opportunities coming from application for the utilization of data, and for guiding complex processes, especially in terms of preventing risk on the territory. So transdisciplinarity can be considered as an urgent issue relating to the solution of new, highly complex and global concerns. And in that way, we have designed and decided to develop from theory, disciplines, concepts, models, pragmatic solutions, dealing with the three major societal challenges that we have identified 
on our territory in coordination with local authorities and companies. The idea is to facilitate the application of research discoveries to help the socio-economic world to better understand the utility of basic sciences in the real world and to enhance the students' employability. To define the societal challenges we want to address, we are first defined how are things now, who are our best researchers in which field and what they want to explore. Then we have defined our target, how we would like them in the future, which challenges are essential for us. And finally, what strategies and actions are needed for the transition to the desired future state of knowledge? So, reference centers have been designed as collaborative platforms for research but also to educate students, which will enable exchanges between researchers, designers, students, entrepreneurs and managers. And the aim was to invent solutions using a collaborative problem-solving approach to share the know and the know-how and to construct all together. The first reference center we designed was called Smart Cities Risk Management and let me now explain what we have done to construct it. First of all, after meeting colleagues from diverse laboratories and after discussions with local authorities and with companies, we have precise the title of one of our projects inside the reference center. And all together, we decide to call it Inventing the Mediterranean City of Tomorrow, which will respect the environment. And this title, has been proposed to all the community and has been adopted. To achieve this ambition, four fields of strategic study were defined according to our research program. The smart district area, smart building, focused on energy, smart mobility, risk, and environment and cycle of water. On the basis of these strategic fields, we have identified where were the needs and the skills within all the partner structures, R&D of companies, laboratories, local authorities, services, and so on. For example, in the field of small district area and energy, we mix competencies from building makers, energy suppliers, School of Engineering, laboratories with competencies in electronics, material sciences, physics, social sciences, economics, and the mayor of the city of Nice decides to construct new buildings for social disabling people, allowing them to survey their energy use in an energy positive building. For that purpose, we specify each innovation axis. We validate technology and non-technology challenges. We identify tools needed and we list indicators of achievement. So now, we have 12,000 new apartments equipped with these new devices and research is still currently conducted about the acceptability and the engagement of the consumers to continue to develop new solutions and to find the good economic model. The strategic development plan to build what we call a project or a new ecosystem includes also the design platforms and shared materials necessary to support innovation and the education programs for training young people to new profiles, such as entrepreneur engineers or manager engineers, and so on. Another interesting example of project comes from the population. 
In the city of Nice, we have a lot of retired people with specific diseases who ask about more information concerning, for example, the air quality. So we designed an, an environment zone in our reference center with real-time data capture and analysis from sensors installed in the city and we developed in association with the medical staff automatic citizen notification in case of abnormal conditions of air quality. This project allows the company to develop new devices to transform ozone into oxygen and the buses of the city were equipped with these devices. So the idea is we need to use skateholders and, and really students are all skateholders within the university to define what we want to do tomorrow in our society and to try to orient part of the research done in the university with the companies and to create new economic models to develop the economy. At the moment, we have defined four projects. Neighbourhoods, intelligent building and energy, survey the water cycle, observation risk and environment, and intelligent mobility. We do the same in the Health, Wellbeing and Aging Reference Centre, and we proceed in the same way. Meeting the challenges of aging, developing personalized medicine to best adapt, provide care to the individual needs, and promote a holistic vision of health that complicate degrades the impacts of physical activity, environment, nutrition, and lifestyle. And we also develop what we call iShare, and iShare, it is uh, all volunteer students that want to be involved in the research programs and uh, that can declare what are their lifestyle, what they uh, eat, what they are doing as sport, and uh, we can rely this way of life, with this lifestyle, with their uh, medical parameters. The third reference center was about di digital challenges. You know that successive crises and rapid technological evolution have required us to rethink our models. In a world in which mobility is now imposed as a fact, in a world in which all information is available everywhere and permanently, our ways of life and our societal codes are undergoing modification. So we try to define the societal expectation in the digital world. And it relates to social models, models for creating value, and civic models. So all together, we received 200 commitment letters from companies for total engagement of more than 43 million euros of co-financing for the next four years. The fact that the companies plan to invest in their own research and development more than 1 billion euros on the same topics indicate that the focus of, on their interests is really good. In addition to classic relationships between laboratories and companies, illustrated by specific doctoral fellowships or R&D partnership, we were very surprised by the interest of the companies in training program. That is why we decided to complete our project to design new education training programs supporting transdisciplinarity. These programs will be in addition to classical master's degree. They were dedicated to education in selected research areas dealing with transdisciplinarity that will be broadly open to international students and they will be based on peer evaluation, self-confidence, student engagement, 
and they can also be used as social labor. The first type of program will deal with excellence in research and it aims to educate young people to transdisciplinarity through immersion in laboratories starting at the bachelor level, including at least two transdisciplinarity research projects at the graduate level and a mandatory mobility of students. We construct the same kind of education programs by replacing immersion in an academic laboratory by immersion in companies with a professional project during the bachelor degree based on the Devola program. The Devola program has been developed in Finland. Companies will propose short projects of R&D to a group of students involved in different study programs. And at the end of a project, the company can decide to pay the students to obtain the intellectual property or students can decide to create their own startup. All these programs will be developed using a virtual center for pedagogical innovation and we ask our teacher to be trained in innovative pedagogy such as design thinking of new curricula, skills approach, project management, flipped classrooms, and in the way to evaluate students involved in the EBOLA program. To complete the education program, we will also design lifelong learning programs, building platforms for specific demands, such as summer school programs, postgraduate masters, professional PhD, and modular orchestra main training. To conduct this ambitious program, to create this new innovative and research-oriented university, we use the skills and competencies of all the actors of research and education of the Côte d'Azur, including six art schools. We are convinced that all territories in the world can define their own strategy to succeed in the construction of a university of 21st century. Thank you for your attention.